Nicely stocked toy aisles is something we can only dream of now, but even back in the day, it was difficult to keep them stocked. Not just because the toy was popular and would fly off the shelves, but because the customer is king and your parents or religious groups would go riot against certain toys being released. And when a new release is a nightmare for your publicity, a recall is the only thing you can really do. In this week's Ed's Retro Geek Out Heatwave Edition, we take a look at a couple action hero toys that got recalled and banned just as fast as they went up on the shelves. Be sure to subscribe for weekly toy videos and let's strap in for some toy history. When Battlestar Galactica came to the TV screens in 78 with spaceships in space, it was sure popular. A franchise created by Universal Studios for ABC to rival Paramount's Star Trek and obviously catch the wave of success 20th Century Fox had created with Star Wars. In Battlestar Galactica, human civilization has become a group of planets they call the 12 Colonies, who are at war with the cybernetic race known as Cylons. And their main goal is the extermination of the human race. Toys were made by Mattel Corporation and included action figures and spaceships. Even after the series had ended, the toys continued to be popular at toy stores. The spaceships borrowed a little gimmick from the Shogun Warriors line as they included the same spring-loaded mechanism, but this time with smaller missiles. Now, unfortunately, on December 31st in 78, a four-year-old managed to shoot one of the missiles into his mouth and it caused him to choke to death. Another kid was more fortunate as he also had the toy missile go down his windpipe, but this time surgeons could remove the projectile from his lung in a half an hour long operation. These events had Mattel initiate a recall of all the spring-loaded missiles. The Colonial Viper, the Scarab and the Stellar Probe were recalled from stores as well as the Cylon Raider space vehicles. Parents could also mail in the little red missiles and in exchange they would get a Hot Wheels toy for the loss in play value. Mattel also redesigned the toys to have non-firing missiles and pop them back on the shelves that way. The boys that however triggered a national outcry to remove projectiles from all toys. In March of 1979 the four-year-old's parents sued Mattel. But the judge dealing with the case singled out the Star Wars Kenner toys as the main culprit. They were the best known and maybe he was trying to set an example. This also affected the mail away we know as Boba Fett the prototype holy grail for Star Wars collectors rocket firing Boba Fett. The firing missile was removed and it delayed the mail away as well. I guess in space nobody can hear you scream, but down here on Earth we could definitely hear some concerned parents. A year later, another space adventure came to the big screen called Alien, where Edgar Giger's creation, the Xenomorph, got the leading role as space slasher in one of the best horror movies ever made. This time, Kenner had gotten the movie license to create children's toys like a board game, a movie viewer, a blaster target set, puzzle, and a highly detailed 18 inch action figure targeted to kids. When parents saw it, it would immediately catapult them back to the Nostromo space vessel right next to Ripley. Even though kids weren't allowed to see the movie, parents determined it was wrong to sell this action figure to kids. The superposable toy with mechanically operated inner mount that when you pushed his head would shoot out was determined to be too terrifying to play with by the parents. Now I think the kids would have made up their own backstory for this Xenomorph with glow-in-the-dark action. After the alien hit the shelf, Scanner got swamped by complaints from angry parents about this monstrosity being marketed to kids. And as no parents were allowing their kids to buy them, the sales were poor, the alien was quickly found in the discount aisles. But in the end, with all the parental outrage, Kenner had only one option left, and that was to pull the toys from the shelves and also shelve the three and quarter inch figures they had planned on making. Luckily now, Super 7 has made the alien action figures through their reaction line. The big alien has been re-released a couple times and was also reimagined by Gentle Giant. And later we did get a whole bunch of Kenner aliens that tied in with the movie sequels. But too bad for all the kids that wanted a cool alien toy back in the late 70s. Because for them, the fearsome creature as perceived by the parents painted another picture. And talking about paint, the colorful lions of Voltron, defenders of the universe, had a bit of an issue with their paint not being 
being up to USA standards. Voltron, like so many robot shows, had its roots from Japanese series that would adapt for the American audiences. The popular Voltron, Defenders of the Universe we all know and love, came from four different series. Mirai Robo Deltanius, Beast Go Lion, Armored Fleet Darugger, 15 and Speedlight Electroid Albigas. All of these were produced by Tui and had their own toy lines produced by Bandai. When the license came over to the US in the 80s, the toys were first made by Matchbox in 84, then Panache Place in 85, and later by LGN in 86. And it's the toys made by Matchbox that created the fuzz, not by the parents doing reports of lead poisoning from the paints used, but by the distributor who alerted the Federal Consumer Product Safety Commission. About 1.5 million of the robots have been distributed by Matchbox since July 85, making it the biggest recall at the time. But not all toys that were out there had the lead paint, so they issued a warning and also included a picture on how to identify the toys. One was the Deluxe Voltron line and the other were the miniature lines. These were made in Taiwan and people could get their money back by calling a Matchbox toll-free number. All the other Voltron toys were fine and fun. The Matchbox Voltron made in Japan toys were harmless, but another Japanese inspired toy proved to be lethal. The Transformers slogan, more than meets the eye, was a bit too perfected for the Transformers Decepticon leader toy. Yes, G1 Megatron was a robot that could turn into a too real looking gun. Again, the toy was an already existing concept they created the American TV show around. The original Megatron toy began life as the Microman figure, Gun Robo P38. And you can also find him in a different color scheme as the Gun Robo P38 Uncle with extra accessories based on the Walter pistol of the 60s spy show The Man from Uncle. The Uncle toy was released by Hasbro as Megatron. The Microman version included a spring loaded firing mechanism with way too small plastic bullets. And yeah, we already knew that was a no go. Even though they released different versions of Megatron, all of a sudden one year he wasn't there anymore on the toy shelves. Megatron is probably the most troubled Transformer toy in all of Transformers history. Due to being originally Japanese, he was frequently banned because he looked like a realistic gun and he was lacking the orange cap to indicate he was just one of the many toy guns out there. Some countries banned it or deemed it illegal due to criminals or kids misusing it as the real gun and terrorizing others or law enforcement officers mistaking it for a real firearm and shooting innocent people as apparently has happened multiple times in the past. And even though Megatron as a gun was pretty badass, his non-robot form was still a bit weird. You couldn't realistically play with him along with the other Transformers in a vehicle form. Next up is G.I. Joe, and now surely the real American hero can be recalled. Or outraged parents, well, they did have to recall Roadblock at one point. No, not that one. Not, not that one. In 1992, the 11th series of Joes, we saw version 4 of Roadblock. The figure was true to the character we knew from the cartoons and great for Joe fans who hadn't seen Roadblock on shelves in the past couple years. The first issue of the figure featured some unique accessories. The first was an updated heavy machine gun which was a perfect match for Roadblock and fit his prior appearances. The second accessory was a two-part spinning launcher that shot a helicopter disc into the air, but the launcher's clutch would get overwound and break. And because his accessory easily broke, they actually recalled that version. They replaced the version of Roadblock in 1993 with the same figure now only packaged with a new spring-loaded accessory. So even if we were dreaming of toys not getting recalled due to outraged parents or the toys being able to harm you, even a G.I. Joe figure could get recalled basically because it wasn't working properly. Talking about dreams, Freddy Krueger has been an iconic character ever since he came onto the scene in 1984 and would eventually join the ranks with the other slashers of the 80s and the already popular Universal Monsters. It only took five years for a toy company to take his merchandising to toy form. In 1989, Matchbox put out this Talking Freddy doll, all your favorite Freddy quotes at the pull of a string. Matchbox Toys was releasing it just in time for Halloween. But it didn't last long. Like we saw with the toys 
teammate for alien, there's usually an angry mob of moms ready for action. In Freddy's case, it was a religious group that urged customers not to buy the talking doll based on the fiend from the movies. The group boycotted stores that stocked the doll and also boycotted all other Matchbox toys at the same time, saying, this toy is the product of a sick mind. The fact that a major toy manufacturer would promote this doll is tragic. We call upon concerned Americans not only to refuse to purchase the Freddy doll, but to boycott all stores which sell it and to boycott other Matchbox toy products. And that's what they said. Shortly thereafter, the company removed the dolls from shelves because of the parental complaints and after all, the character kills kids in their sleep. Now, with only 40,000 of them being shipped out before the protests began, they're actually quite rare to find now. Matchbox also had other plans that year, releasing the Max FX toy line where you would get a base character and pop on special effects to create an awesome movie monster. The first one they chose to come out was the Freddy Krueger, and that's why you never saw the alien Jason Voorhees or the Universal Monsters in Max FX form. Who would have thought that a toy company's dream of turning the ghoulish movie character Freddy Krueger into a popular doll could turn out to be a nightmare for business. If there's any band or recall toys I missed, please check out the previous episodes or leave them down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you don't want to miss out on toy history videos weekly. You can also support the channel by leaving a like, leaving a comment, or by sharing this video to another toy fan. If you want to do more, you can always check out my Patreon, and I hope to see you all next week in a brand new video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!